Today we're taking you on another day trip here in Patagonia, this time to visit the town of Trevelin. If you've been following along, then you probably know we stumbled upon a series of Walsh towns in Argentina and we couldn't resist visiting them. Dragons and afternoon tea may have been part of the draw, but we were also very curious to learn what life was like for the first Welsh settlers who arrived in these lands. So today, we're introducing you to yet another Welsh town. This one is called Trevelin, which translates to Mill Town. Now let's go explore. Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. Good morning, friends. Greetings from Trevelin, Argentina. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to say it with an Argentine accent, Trevelin. Trevelin. Um, another Welsh town. Yep. We are on a roll here. Is this so, our fourth? Uh, yeah. This well, might be our fourth. <laughs> it might be our fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you get surprised. We're going for uh, we're going for tea again. Yes. Tea and cakes. Welsh tea. That's <laughs> what you do in these Welsh towns. That's what you do. But we also plan to do a lot of walking around. There's yeah. some regional museums. There's a river. And we might even have a little bite to eat later in the afternoon. Yeah, so basically this is a day trip from Iskel. Yep. And we ended up taking a taxi in here because it's a Sunday. Yeah. The buses aren't running very frequently, but it wasn't too bad. We paid no. 12 or $13. Yeah, and it meant that we had an extra hour and a half. Yeah, and it's like a 20 so, kilometer ride. So we're happy to be here. It. Let's explore this town. Let's do it. Of course, our first stop was a Welsh tea house because, hello, we love food. Thankfully, this place does serve afternoon tea in the middle of the morning. Morning tea, shall we call it? All right, guys, I'm super happy because we are having another Welsh tea. We are sure on a roll We're here sure in our part of Argentina. Huh? Welsh culture is alive and well here in Patagonia. And so today, we're at a tea house called Nine Maggie which means Grandmother Margaret. Today we've actually ordered just one set of Welsh tea We've learned from our previous mistakes. Yeah, because we weren't able to finish everything no. and we're starting to put on a bit of weight, so we figure, yeah. let's pace ourselves. I'd like to still fit into our clothes as that the trip progresses. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so we have two slices of bread. Yep. There's like a white bread and then a whole wheat bread. And this is made using flour from yep. the local mill. We also have some cheese, mm -hmm. two different jams. This one looks like strawberry. We have butter. butter, a scone, a salty scone. Yum, yum. And then we have five different cakes, chocolate, apple, dulce de leche, Welsh cake, and cream. <laughs> what about the tea? The most oh, there's tea. Yeah. We're having loose leaf tea. They told us you just add a little bit of cold milk mm -hmm. to kind of like cut the tea. That's the Welsh way bit of sugar. I'm in my element. <sighs> it's good stuff. Good stuff. And we're moving on to the cakes. Guys, I think I found my favorite cake off camera. You missed it. You gotta save some for me, please. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to. No, I need a bite. It's chocolate cake. It's like chocolate <laughs> sponge cake. Wow. And it has a coffee icing. Like a delicious icing. <laughs> Good stuff. And heavenly cake, and they're playing heavenly music. <laughs> and you're the music still... matches the moment, it matches the experience. And you've got one more to try cream cake. I do. This is like a cream pie, and we've had it at every single tea house we've been to yep. so far. So it seems to be quite popular, it's right along with the Welsh cake. It's a winner. It's just very creamy and smooth. It's just also oh, tasty, though. No? I'm having a wonderful time. <laughs> so am I. Sam has three cakes on his yes. plate. So this one, I think, is uh, is a chocolate cake. It's no, like a, that's the Welsh cake, my oh, friend. Duh, duh, Welsh but, um, cake. Um, apple pie and the dulce de leche pie. The Welsh cake is made with brown sugar. It really tastes of brown sugar. Got a hint of rum, the raisins. It's like Christmas cake, apple pie. Another favorite of yours? Mm. You know, the quality of these cakes is probably probably my favorite of all the all of all the Welsh tea houses we've been to. Can't wait for this one. Anything with dulce de leche is a hit. And is that coconut on top? It sure is. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh, you're gonna try that one. That's the best. That's wow. the best. So there are two tea houses here in Trevelin. This is the second one. 
we don't have room for a second afternoon tea. But know that there's an option, there are choices. You can choose from the one we went to this morning or this one right behind me. Let's talk prices. We just finished that wonderful Welsh tea. Oh my goodness, we ate it all. Nothing was left. All the cakes, all the bread, the scone, demolished it. So price-wise, it was just under 13 US dollars. We are stuffed, it was so good. It was a really nice, relaxed environment. We just lingered for a bit afterwards. And now we are going for a walk along the river. This is called Rio Persi, Percy River. Um, it's also known as the Costanera, the boardwalk along here. Although we're down on the pebbles. And yeah, we're just gonna walk off that cake. I feel like we need a bit of exercise at the moment. in action <laughs> we are now walking towards a Welsh chapel it looks small small brick chapel so we're gonna go see if it's open it's one of the attractions here in the town let's go check it out We forgot it was Sunday and therefore a church service was going on or it was just finishing. <laughs> Either way, we couldn't go inside the church. But now we're gonna take you on a little walk through town. The main street is called Avenida San Martin. That's where we're headed. Oh, that pop isn't, isn't too keen on strangers walking in front of his yard. One thing I've noticed in this town and also other Welsh towns we've been visiting here in Patagonia is that they have some beautiful gardens with rose bushes. Like you see rose bushes in people's yards, but even on the streets. Someone made a new friend. I made a friend. Did you make a friend? I just Hello, crouched friend. down to pet the cat and he climbed on top of me. Hello, friend. And he's purring. Hello. El gatito. We are now visiting a monument to the Mimosa, the first ship to arrive with Welsh settlers ready to come to Patagonia. They had no idea that were, what they were getting themselves into. Huh? Huh. Next up, we are visiting the Regional Museum of Trevelin, and it says Andean Mill. Mill of the Andes? Mill of the Andes. Sounds about right. Also, there is a tulip farm outside Trevelin. <laughs> We're here at the wrong time of yeah. year. Was it October? I think they said October, springtime in South America. That's what it looks like. Come a bit closer. Mountains, tulips. We actually went into the tourist office and we're like, where can we go see the tulips? Is it difficult to get there? And they looked at us and they're like, it's not springtime. Oh yeah, Southern Hemisphere. 
kitty just ran towards Sam. It was the cutest thing ever. That calls for an ultra zoom. Kitty, so sweet. Mush, 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 mush. Ah. Oh, hi, meowsies. Hi, meowsies. Oh, meowsies. Yes, yes. Call it. <gasps> Go mush, 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 mush. Oh, it's looking at a bird. It sees birds. Oh, oh, oh. Hunting mode. Well, here's a map of the town. Yes, meowsies. Red dragon. Very Welsh. There you have it. It's a very walkable town. This museum showcases objects that were part of daily life for the Welsh settlers of Patagonia. You'll see furniture, home decorations, musical instruments, clothes, random household items, and even farming equipment. That was a pretty cool museum. The first floor, which had like four different rooms, Hello. was all about, hello Sam, <laughs> it was all about the mill and farming equipment and old tools and things like that. Yeah. And then they have a second and a third floor where it was more about Welsh culture and like the things they brought with them and what their daily life was like. So. I really yeah, liked it's, it. it's a fairly big museum for yeah. a small town. Mm -hmm. and I found it really fascinating to see the old industrial equipment. Like, mm -hmm. Just massive. Yeah, and so you guys have an idea. Admission was $2. Bucks. Literally. Great value. Great value. So here we have el malacara. Quite literally, malacara means bad face. Um, it's a bit of a strange name for a tourist attraction. But basically, we have a museum. This is the reconstruction of the first house of John Daniel Evans, the man who founded the mill. We just visited the flour mill. And he also founded this little town we're visiting, Trevelin. Ta-da! And then we have the tomb of Malacara, the name of the horse. The poor horse was called Bad Face. Um, but yeah, it's closed right now, but if you're interested in visiting, here are the hours and here is the cost, 100 pesos for a guided tour. And now we're going to take you out for some barbecue at a restaurant called Los Troncos. Well, we got hungry after walking around town, even though we had all those cakes, all those tarts. So, parrilla. Sam's selection, he wanted meat. He wanted wine, because this is Argentina, I people. I wanted a bottle of wine, and <laughs> I'm in a glass. Instead, he got a glass. Because someone else Instead, didn't want to have any. Because it's a big bottle. <laughs> Sam's a little sad that he's only getting a glass, but uh, I definitely life am. goes on. All right, let's try this. This is the asado de tira, which is like the ribs. Oh. Fresh off the grill, that barbecue. That's one of my favorite cuts. I mean, there's so many good cuts, obviously, in Argentina, but that's like in the top three or four, I'm sure. And we also ordered sides, two sides. Yeah. So we have... Ensalada completa. Yep. Yeah. Um, papas fritas. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, wow. You really taste the garlic in yeah, the parfait. Yeah, it's a raw garlic, oh, FYI. So good. So, lunch. Fabulous. That was fabulous. Oh my gosh. Steak and wine, that just like you wanted. Oh, really good price too. 20 US dollars. I included uh -huh. two cups of red wine. Not a full bottle. Not a full bottle. <laughs> Complimentary bread. Yes. We got a soda water. We also had a salad and we had fries with garlic and herbs. So. And did you mention the meat? Yeah, and of course the you meat. You had meat. <laughs> and, this, uh, and the Parisia, of course. Yeah. So, um, it was good. We're leaving satisfied in, in a good way. We're not like our bellies aren't like protruding out, which is sometimes the case when we go to a Parisia because sometimes we order too much meat and then we get dessert on top of that. We played it safe. 
we decided not to have dessert yeah and it ended up being just perfect to be fair we had dessert this morning when we had our welsh yeah. tea so fair fair point. that's all the sugar we need in one day <laughs> so yeah overall great and now we're gonna head to the plaza yeah apparently there's a fair happening in the afternoon yeah um we were told they should be setting up around three or four o'clock so we're gonna check that out it's perfect it's just past four the artisanal fair was taking place in the town's main square and they had all sorts of crafts, knitwear and leather goods for sale, but of course what caught our attention were the cakes. It took mere seconds for us to order up a slice. This really did turn into a bit of a foodie tour. So much for not getting any dessert. We walked into the fair. It was yeah. mostly that's food. What, that's what happens when you restrict the wine. I, I rebel. He rebel? <laughs> rebel. And ordered, I ordered two. a double <laughs> portion <laughs> of dessert. <laughs> there Tell you us, go. What are there you, you having? Go. So I'm having this. This looks absolutely amazing. To be honest, it's not so much rebelling. It's more so that this this cake looks so good. So it has dulce de leche icing. Look at this uh -huh. thick layer here. A big glob on top. You got a walnut. Walnuts. It's dense. When I picked it up in the hand, I was like, yeah, oh, lots and of then, walnuts. Then over here, it's an alfajore maicena. Which is basically a uh, cornstarch, yeah, um, double cor layer cornstarch cookie. cookie, tons of dulce de leche, coconut sprinkles all around the perimeter. Oh my. I mean, there's a lot of goodness going on. This is a dulce de leche feast to end the day here in Traveling. Gotta love it. So, guys, time to try this dulce de leche cake. Come look, I'm grabbing the biggest piece Ooh. of dulce de leche with a big chunk of walnut, walnut on there. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Also, I don't think we mentioned the price. Two U.S. dollars, so two U.S. dollars. That's for both of us. Oh Eat this. my! What a deal! What a deal! All these fantastic. As you can see, there's been a little nibble made already. A little mouse. No. Mm. They didn't skip on the dulce de leche. There's plenty in the middle. It's loaded. The worst thing is when they like exaggerate it around their perimeter. They think you're getting so much in the middle. It's just thick here, and then it gets really thin, and you're like kind of like dry cookie. This is perfect. Yeah, we're yeah. going to enjoy this until our bus arrives mm -hmm. and then we go back to Eskel. Indeed. Indeed. Thanks again. And that is it for our adventures and traveling. We hope you guys enjoyed this fun and easy day trip from Eskel and we'll see you soon with more videos from Patagonia. Mm -hmm.